This presentation is brought to you by the Beljanski Foundation. Over 50 years of research towards curing cancer the natural way. Okay, so I'll say it formally. Uh, my name is Dr. Gary DeBrant. I'm a chiropractor, holistic doctor, nutritionist, naturopath, psychotherapist, and I've been in practice. This is my 40th year, actually, in practice. Um, now you're supposed to laugh and say you don't look that old. I mean, you know, it's like. It's, there you go, there you go, we got, a, we got a live crowd here. I did that once and no one said a thing. And I said, okay, I'll leave now and it's over, you know. Um, you're also gonna notice that I am drinking water, which is one of the things that I will talk to you about in a minute, and it's out of a glass bottle. Mountain Valley. Um, it's very important that you realize that I am sort of a living proof kind of guy about what it is that I'm talking about. And I mean this. Um, I was an undiagnosed diabetic when I was nine years old. Uh, my father was a Coca-Cola salesman, and I had all the free soda that I could drink when I was that age. And I had full-blown either pre-diabetes or diabetes. I don't remember. It was when I was nine, but I heard the term diabetes all the time. And I was a, a, a diabetic. And it took me until my in 20s, when I took control over my own health, to actually say I wasn't going to be a diabetic anymore, and I haven't been in over 35 years. So I cured myself of diabetes. Now I'm gonna say the other really important thing right now. I can't cure you of whatever it is that ails you. I wanna be really clear about it, but I will tell you this, I will help empower you that you can become your own best healer because the person who can heal you the most is you. And I'm really a firm believer that once we take responsibility for our well-being and our health and actually take some action steps instead of just talking about it, but actually do the things we're talking about, our health changes for the better. Along the way, when I was ill, I um, developed asthma, which was pretty crippling, and I almost died from it. I had allergies and psoriasis over 50% of my body, and then the coup de grace, when, when I was 13, I was having terrific pain in my back and neck, and I developed, uh, developed a scoliosis, which uh, the MDs told my Parents that if I didn't have a Harrington rod, which is a steel rod this big, put into my spine, I would be crippled by the time I was 30. Now, I just told you I was in practice for 40 years, so you know I'm past 40, um, past 30, and I'm not crippled, and I'm, I'm, I have never had a rod in my spine. I don't have asthma, I don't have diabetes, I don't have psoriasis. I still do get allergies sometimes if I eat incorrectly and really don't sleep and do the things that I just talked about in, in the, or are in that sheet. So the truth of this is that I live what I'm talking about. So the things I'm gonna to talk to you about now are concrete and real because I'm living them and I've helped somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 20,000 other people in my career help uh, do those as well. So the lecture is about detoxification and it's about liver fattiness and congestion, which is really the way that I think of it. And I wanna say here that our bodies are magnificently uh, uh, capable of detoxifying themselves. We were designed to do that. Whoever made us, however you believe in God or a higher spirit or whatever it is, we were designed to detoxify. Every organ and every gland has the capacity to detoxify. And, and glands, by those I mean things like thyroid, adrenals, pituitary, everything has the capacity. What happens though, living in our modern world, is that we don't have the capability so much anymore because everything becomes clogged and stuck and holding in and congested. That's what fatty liver disease is. We always used to hear about fatty liver disease when uh, people drank a lot and they got cirrhosis or fatty liver. You don't hear that so much anymore. You hear it all the time, people having cirrhosis of liver or fatty liver disease just from normal everyday life. What's different? And here's the answer. The difference is we are way more toxic than we ever have been in the history of humanity. We are taking in toxins as we are sitting here right now that we will not be able to get out of our bodies because everything in this room, I'm, I love you, Weston, I'm not putting you down. Um, everything in this room and everything in every other room that you're gonna be in a hotel like this is synthetic. The carpets are outgassing. Um, if they clean the carpets recently, which they probably did, those are chemicals in there. They're outgassing into us. There are fluorescent lights everywhere. And all of those fluorescent lights are putting out a frequency that is hard for us to work in our bodies. Add to that these things. Mine is off, by the way, and yours should be if you're sitting with it in your pocket. Um, and there's electromagnetic fields that we're being beamed with all the time. And we have virtually no way to stop any of this because it's insidious. It's everywhere. The reality is, is that we are losing this battle around toxicity. Except for this, 
because at this point in, you know, when I get into some of the reasons why we're so toxic, people start putting their heads down and I watch like this and I feel like people are just going to collapse and just give up. We don't want to give up. We want to get educated and get empowered to change it. And so you can do things. One of the things you can do with these is not carry them on as much or put them further away from your body and do things like get their little chips that you can get that neutralize or harmonize the electromagnetic field that's around there. And that's just one simple suggestion. Drinking out of glass bottles is another. I will tell you the reason why it's so important. Um, what do we think about plastics? Ah, uh, somebody went, ah. Uh. There's, it's more than just a. Uh. Plastics are, are perhaps the single largest and most insidious toxin that we have in our lives today. And what I mean by that is this, very simple. Bisphenol A, BPA, we've heard of it. Right. Yeah. Everybody knows that bisphenol A is bad, but why we, is it bad? And we should know the reason. It's bad because it's an endocrine and hormone disruptor. It specifically alters the um, estrogen levels in the body and promotes um, accelerated estrogen deposits in the tissue. We don't want to have that in our bodies. And so industry, being smart and, and courageous as they are, says we're going to get rid of BPA and we're going to say that it doesn't have BPA in it. You know what they did? If you have a BPA-free bottle, they got that out and put in BPS, which is bisphenol sulfate, which is a kissing cousin to BPA and 10 times more hormone disruptive and difficult for the body to get rid of. So that's in your BPA-free bottle. And then there's something called phthalates. Anybody know what a phthalate is? It's the consistent form if you have a plastic water bottle or any other thing that either allows it to be stiff or soft. And phthalates used to be generally regarded as safe. Now we understand they're an endocrine disruptor that's even more insidious than BPA was. They specifically alter your thyroid. Now this leads me to a really important thing. There's a class of um, contaminants, uh, pollutants, whatever you want to call them, that create different problems in our bodies. And this is the problem they create. The term obesogen didn't exist. Uh, eight years ago. Somebody coined it because of the problem that we're having, which is obesity and diabetes are coming together in the form of, of diabetes. And obesogen is a product or substance that actually makes us obese and fat. And plastic makes us fat. Plain and simple. You drink and eat out of plastic, you're going to get gain weight and not be able to get it off. And you're going to be in somebody's um, uh, office or at Weight Watchers or at Jenny Craig's or one of these horrible, uh, one of these diet places, and 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 then you're going to be sitting there wondering you can go on their program and get rid of it as soon as you either stop doing exactly what they said or it comes back on its own and you've gained more weight back than you originally had. It's because our bodies are toxic, not because we don't know how to lose weight. Our bodies are toxic, and they're not having any relief. Toxicity happens in our bodies. I, I've got 20 minutes, so I'm going to just keep going because there's a huge amount of material here. Toxicity happens in our bodies in this way. We have this elegant detoxification system. It goes through phase one and phase two, and particularly in the liver, because the liver does 60% of all of the uh, toxic removal in the body, although every organ and gland can do it. Phase one of the in detoxification is like this. It's a conveyor belt bringing the toxins in. They get moved over here, and they go out on, on the second conveyor belt. That's phase two. Why is this so important is that most toxins coming into the body are very affinity or, or desire hanging out in one tissue. Does anybody know the tissue? Fat. Fat tissue is the one place that most toxins want to hang out. So if you have a fatty liver or if you're congested in your organs and glands, those are going to hold on to more toxins. And particularly since the liver is right here and we have it right around here, we start on putting on more visceral body fat. Everybody know that term? It means organ body fat. That is the most dangerous type of fat that we have. It's the one that will actually shorten your life because it puts out its own set of hormones. And we don't want to have that happening. It's not a gland. It's not an organ. It's fat. And it's doing an insidious job of creating more inflammation. We used to hear the term, money is the root of all evil. I'm here to give you another idea. Inflammation is the root of all evil. And when we become toxic, we become inflamed, and we move towards disease states, including autoimmunity. 
And if you have an autoimmune disease, I will tell you now, toxicity has reached a place where your body can no longer self-regulate and it needs help with detoxification. So this phase one and phase two, I wanna um, say it a little bit clearer. Does everybody remember the I Love Lucy show? Okay. Do you, everybody remember the uh, Lucy in the Chocolate Factory? Yeah. Right. I don't, it's, I, they could, people could be 15 years old and they know that show. It's amazing that, how many people know this. So that's a little bit of a good analogy right here. Phase one is the first conveyor belt bringing the chocolate. And if you remember what Lucy had to do, she had to take the chocolate, move it from one conveyor belt to another, and then it moved out. And everything in the beginning of this was smooth because the, the chocolate was coming in slow enough. And she was smiling and kind of like, oh, I got this and I can do this. And then things started to speed up a little bit. And so she got a little bit nervous. She, she couldn't keep up with it and she started doing this. She started stuffing the chocolate in her pocket. She went down her pants. She had a chef's hat on at the very end. She put it underneath the hat, if you remember. And then the very thing when it kept getting faster and faster, and that, by the way, the analogy is toxins coming into our body as they accumulate. She wound up putting it in her mouth and the end of the show was is like this. We all remember. It's a classic scene. What happened was she couldn't get the, the uh, chocolate, the toxins, from the first conveyor belt to become water-soluble, which is the way that we get them out of our bodies. So that place where she was standing is a place called intermediate metabolites. It's partly broken down products that then become water-soluble and go out the other way. Take this and, and write it down if you're a note-taker. This is really important. That place, the intermediate metabolites, when it becomes overwhelmed, when our toxins are overwhelming Lucy's capability, our body's capability to be able to get rid of stuff, that place is, becomes reactive intermediate metabolites, and it's the birthplace of almost every significant cancer you will ever see, right there. And that happens in the liver 60% of the time more because it's, it's how much the liver does uh, detoxifying. So you want to understand it's incredibly important that we assist the body's ability to detoxify the liver and the kidneys and the colon because they're the big three and help Lucy get the toxins from one side over to the other conveyor belt where they're water solu soluble and, and, and we can get rid of them. You have in, in you the successful detoxification uh, steps, but you also have some herbs and things that are good for your liver, colon, and kidneys. They're very important for you to pay attention to. Of in and of itself, they're not enough. Most of us need to undergo detoxification um, processes regularly. And I make this statement to you because it's the truth. It's how I keep myself healthy. I detoxify, do, do something to detox, detoxify every single day of my life. I don't take a day off from detoxifying because if I do, what I'm doing essentially is letting toxins build up. And I do that a number of different ways. Here's the ways. I use an infrared sauna five or six nights a week. I have a portable one. I have um, uh, shots of it upstairs at, the, um, at my booth. You're welcome to come look at it. It's inexpensive. It does not have flame retardants and other chemicals that are usually associated with these. I will not name anybody else's brands, but please be aware that that's in almost every brand that you're going to see commercially in the portable ones. They're just full of chemicals. And they also produce electromagnetic fields. The ones that I use don't produce any electromagnetic fields. And they're remarkably consistent for removing toxins through the sweat. Removing toxins through the sweat is one of the most important things you can do. I have a chart upstairs which shows the difference between getting heavy metals out using urine and getting it out using a far infrared or sweat sauna, and it's like this. This much more come out instead of that from using sweat, from using urine. So it's incredibly valuable and important thing to do. The other thing that I do with people is I use homeopathy and I use functional foods. I have a three week to a month long detoxification uh, process where we use food substitutes and get people on a regular pathway to detoxify. Not only do you lose toxins, people tell me they smell differently, they can see better, their pain goes down and inflammation goes down in their joints and other places in their bodies, but they also lose some weight because remember what we said about toxins in the first place, they like fat. The more fat you have on you, the more likely you have toxins in you. And that, by the way, includes the brain because the brain is made up of 80 to 90% cholesterol. What is cholesterol? A fat. 
Um, so if you think your brain is somehow missing out on the toxic load, and it's by design 80 to 90 percent, we're missing out on a very, very, very important thing, which is the fact that the brain becomes toxic almost faster and in some ways than some of the other organs because things pass through the blood-brain barrier. And when they get in there, like aluminum or things from vaccines or injections of all different types, they don't come out so easily. So, so far, everything makes sense? Just say yes or whatever? Yep, okay. All right, I got about five more minutes, I think. Um, is that right? Do I have about? I got three more minutes, all right. Oh, I hate this part. Um, tomorrow I'm lecturing on adrenal fatigue, by the way, here in, 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 uh, in one of the other rooms, and it's a 45-minute lecture. Please come back and see me, because then you can ask questions. But I'll be up at the room doing mini Zyto tests now, and we have a special and a, a whole brochure about the different kinds of Zyto tests. We have one for autoimmunity. We have one for lifestyle. We have a whole bunch of different ones. What I want to leave you with this is this, though. If you take a, a, all of this information that you're getting here today, what I want to say is whether you come to me or you don't, or whether you go to somebody else, commit to taking an action step. Don't sit and take this information in and say, well, I'll get to this next week or next whatever, because next week is next year. And next year turns out to be three years down the road. And three years down the road turns into I've got a major disease or dysfunction and I'm not doing anything to actually help my body. What I want to suggest to you now is take an action step. Make a commitment to go to somebody, talk with them, spend a little of your money, do whatever it is you need to figure out, and set your pathway to detoxify. Because if you do, you're going to lead a longer, fuller, less painful, less stressed out life. And those methods that I just gave you for detoxifying are ones that after 40 years of being in practice, I have done successfully with over 10,000 people. So I uh, thank you all very much. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.